The number of Americans who say, yes, I'm very happy with my life, peaks in 1956 and goes slowly but steadily downhill ever since. The stresses on the average household have increased enormously. There is a constant pressure on people to have bigger, better, more. And all the time we're exposed to images of a certain level of material success, a certain level of looks, a certain lifestyle that we're kind of measuring ourselves up to and seeing ourselves not as good as. It's a terrific onslaught of marketing, advertising, brainwashing. It's a system run amok. We often hear about efficiencies of scale, but actually the truth is what we've developed today is a system that could not be more wasteful. We have tuna fish caught on the east coast of America, flown to Japan, processed, flown back to America and sold to consumers. We have English apples flown to South Africa to be waxed, flown back again to be sold to consumers. The whole process involves incredible quantities of waste. Only with a full cost accounting system, a true cost accounting system, will we begin to understand that goods that are shipped from 10,000 miles away are actually far more expensive than goods produced locally. If you shorten the distance between producers and consumers, you're cutting out your food miles, you're cutting out your emissions, your oil dependency. If we're going to buy food in San Francisco, let's buy it regionally. We've got to begin localizing our politics, localizing our economies, localizing our spirits, you know, even our spiritual natures. Local knowledge is knowledge that tells you about life. It is about living. Yeah, I call it grandmother's knowledge, and I think the biggest thing we need, the task for today, is to create grandmother's universities everywhere so that local knowledge never disappears. If we can embrace the challenge, if we can engage our creative brilliance in this process. The future with less oil could be preferable to the present with lots of oil.